Kate and I are so sorry not to be able to be with you in person at St. Mary's for worship today. Like most bishops, I am still not participating regularly in in-person worship, mostly because we bishops do not want to be unwitting conduits of infection. While the vaccines are changing a great deal for us and enabling us to do so much more, the rate of vaccinations remains uneven across the regions of most dioceses. In our work as bishops, in the course of any week, we are normally in many different communities, in many different parts of our diocese, with lots of different people, and we recognize that this may still be very risky activity, both to ourselves and to others, especially in communities where many are not yet vaccinated. To be able to participate without concern in in-person worship and in other in-person gatherings has been hard for all of us, and I want to thank your clergy, your parish staff, and your vestry for all that they have been doing to support and sustain your common life at St. Mary's over these last 16 months. This has not been easy work, and they deserve our gratitude. Please continue to pray for your parish leadership, and please continue to pray for all those who are suffering from the ongoing pandemic in any way. We also pray for those who are working tirelessly to vaccinate our population and to find more effective treatments so that we may all live with as little risk as possible. And please remember that I pray for you and give thanks for your ministry every day. Across the little road outside the tomb of Lazarus in Bethany, just over the Mount of Olives from Jerusalem, there is a stall where a family sells a range of goods to the pilgrims who come there. And on that stall, pilgrims can always find little plastic containers of mustard seeds. The woman who runs the stall is always happy to show pilgrims a pod of mustard seeds. She will crush the pod into their hands, and she never seems to tire of the surprise that they express as they see hundreds of tiny seeds spill out of the pod into their palms. The mustard seed is, as Jesus says, the smallest of all seeds. And yet Jesus says that even the reign of God, which will at last come to embrace the whole creation, begins with just such a tiny seed. And what is that seed? It is the seed of love, the seed of the love of God in each human heart. Whether we like it or not, whether we are even aware of it or not, new life sprouts up around us all the time. New circumstances, new opportunities, even new limitations. Not all that is new is nice, but life continues to unfold. If the pandemic has taught us anything, it has taught us this truth again. The challenge for us is that we often do not fully understand what is happening to us and around us in the moment. It is only later, sometimes much later, that the full ramifications of what is happening to us today become apparent. And sometimes we may never really fully understand. Someone has rightly said that we can only see divine providence in the rear-view mirror later, after the crisis or the joy has receded and we have had time to reflect and pray. Consider, for example, the moment when you and I were baptized or when we were confirmed. Were I with you today, we would probably be confirming a number of people. When we were baptized and confirmed, we were welcomed into the full life of the Church and into a deeper relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. What does this actually mean, really, for us who once made these commitments, 
or for whom they were made if we were baptized as babies? And what does this mean for us who are to accompany those who at baptism or confirmation are at a turning point in their lives of faith? What new possibilities open up for all of us on our journey together to the heart of God? When people are baptized or confirmed, we do not yet know what will unfold for them in their Christian journeys. Something new is being born in those moments, and the full flowering of this only happens over a lifetime. But there are things that we do know, and they are crucial to remember. The first thing that we know is the truth of which Jesus reminds us in the Gospel this morning. Wherever we are on our Christian journey to the heart of God, we are not on this journey alone. It is God who nourishes us as we grow in faith and commitment, and the mystery of God's work in each of us is often hidden for a long time, just as the seed is hidden in the ground before it sprouts and flowers. The second thing that we remember is the power that a single person or a small group of people possess to change the world. Just as the smallest seed grows into the largest bush, so the dream of one individual or the dream of one small group of people can transform an entire community. In our Christian tradition, we say that to change one life is to change eternity. And lastly, we remember this morning that the way forward may well come from the least likely source. We are reminded by Jesus constantly that we are called always to be alert and discerning. I suspect that none of us who have lived the Christian life for any length of time would have guessed how our relationship with God would have unfolded. We certainly could not have predicted the pandemic and all that the pandemic has demanded of us and shown for us in the possibilities of our relationship with God and with each other. Nor could we have imagined what the pandemic has demanded of us in our responsibility for the ongoing life of our families, our workplaces, our neighborhoods, our schools, and especially this community of St. Mary's. Our God is a God of surprises, and in God's wisdom there is a way forward to new life that may not yet be clear to us. We may still be unclear, still finding our way. Our baptism, our confirmation, these were mustard seeds sown in us. How has that life that was sown in us been growing? How different are we now? And where must we still be encouraging growth and change so that we may be even more responsive to God's love? For God's love is to the soul what light is to the tiny young plant. As we continue to live in this Christian community, into the new life that lies before us as a new world emerges. We know that we are partners with a God who loves us, wishes for us only our good, and who will walk with us every step of the way. It may seem sometimes like we are the smallest of seeds. But do not lose heart, Jesus reminds us today. For God has made us little lower than the angels, and he has crowned us with glory and honor. Take this God by the hand, and make heaven on earth flourish in this place. Amen.